Hello boys and girls, this is Mrs. Stone and welcome to your very first grammar lesson. Um, what we're going to do in grammar is we will rarely do grammar in class as far as me teaching grammar. So you'll probably always have a grammar lesson online with me on Mondays. And then either on Tuesday or Friday you'll play a game that goes with that lesson. And then on Friday, unless I tell you, in the video or something but every Friday you're going to have a grammar quiz um, I think it I I've kind of tested it out the last couple of years and I think you guys actually do better when there's not so much to have to worry about and so on Friday you'll have a grammar quiz over the four kinds of sentences that we're going to talk about and um, the quiz you don't have to stress about it. the quiz is only going to be like 10 15 questions long probably take you 10 minutes and then that's going to be it so there's not going to be one huge grammar test. They're all going to be little short quizzes. So I think that'll help. Um, before we get started, I want to make sure that you have everything that you need. You're going to need your workbook. And I think you need to turn to page 8 in your workbook. You're going to need your pencil and you're going to need your red colored pencil. And um, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with that red colored pencil pretty soon. So if you don't have that, I want you to stop to pause it. Go find everything you need. Come back and then... When you're ready, you can re you can start from where you left off, and so that's going to happen on grammar and any kind of lesson I do. Um, I I might say I want you to pause it right now. You're going to figure stuff out, and then you're going to come back and restart the and start from where you left off. So um, another thing, if you're expecting Mrs. Stone's lessons to be absolutely perfect with no mistakes, then you might as well hang that one up because that's not going to happen. I tried being very perfect my first couple of times I did this, and it would take me hours upon hours to get one 15-minute lesson correct. And so I decided, eh, they're going to hear me make mistakes in class, so they might as well hear mistakes when I do a video. So anyway, so we're going to get started, and um, this is going to be a fairly short lesson today. I think this is a lot of repeat stuff for everybody. You probably had all of this before you just may have called them something different so I'll go through that as we're um, going through your workbook okay so if you don't have all your stuff that you need I want you to pause the video and then restart when you find everything okay let's get started on the lesson so let's look at workbook page number eight and our very first lesson which your quiz is going to be over on Friday we'll probably pay, play a game on Friday during reading group time um, we probably won't have time to do reading groups on Tuesday just because I have to explain all the classroom rules and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, we're going to get look at this page. And like I said, you've probably already had this short quiz on Friday. It's going to talk about the four kinds of sentences. It says a sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. And you're going to get very used to that word sentence this, this year because when I have you write an answer down, okay, you're going to be writing in complete sentences. Oh, and I can hear the groaning now. But fortunately, you don't have to start off in cursive. So you can print those complete sentences. And we'll talk about that more on Tuesday. Um, it says a sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. There are four kinds of sentences. We have a declarative sentence makes a statement. Now it ends with a period. In the past, you may have called this a telling sentence. Okay, we just use fancy schmancy words in fourth grade. And so we're going to use the word declarative for a telling sentence. Just tells a fact or tells an opinion, but it's not strong. It's just normal, everyday sentence. Like we watched a movie about volcanoes. That would be a declarative sentence. The next type is an interrogative sentence and it asks a question. Now, it's going to end with a question mark. This is how I always remember. You may have heard of a, a questioning sentence or something, but we call it an interrogative. Now, if you ever watch those police shows or you watch a cartoon about the police and they take a suspect in for questioning, they always take him into the interrogation room. Okay, looks familiar, looks very similar, doesn't it? And what do they do in the interrogation room? How do they find out if he is the criminal or not? Well, they ask him a bunch of questions. So an interrogative sentence 
has a question mark at the end. The example they gave you is, have you ever seen a volcano? Now, another one is an imperative sentence, and this is a command. Okay, you probably hear a lot of these, like, go clean your room, take out the trash. Those are all imperative sentences. Okay, it doesn't start with a subject because you automatically assume when you hear an imperative sentence that you, they're talking to you, okay? The command is directed to you, so you are the sentence. I mean, you are the subject. So, the examples I gave you is stay away from the active volcanoes or please be careful, all right? You could put you stay away from the active volcanoes or you please be careful, okay? But they're just assuming that whoever they're giving the command to, you're the subject of that sentence, and it ends with a period. An exclamatory sentence shows strong feelings. Now, that's the difference between a declarative and an exclamatory. Okay, an exclamatory sentence is going to show great emotion, and it's going to have very strong words in it. So the examples that they give you is how amazing that would be. Or, wow, the colors are so bright. Those need exclamation points at the ends of those sentences. And it says every sentence begins with a capital letter and ends with a punctuation mark. The end punctuation you use depends on the kind of sentence you write. All right. So now that we kind of have a feel of what we're going to be looking at, I want you to go ahead and I want you to look at practice set A. And it's going to look something like this in your workbook. What you're going to do, it says read each sentence. Write declarative, interrogative, imperative, or exclamatory to tell what kind of sentence it is. And I am perfectly fine if you want to abbreviate. But when you write down inter interrogative or imperative, you got to make, just don't write an I because that could be either one, right? So you have to make sure you can distinguish which one you're talking about. All right, so let's go ahead and do the very first one together. Number one says, what an incredible sight that is. What does it end with? It ends with an exclamation mark, so you know that it's going to be an exclamatory sentence. Now, it's really kind of easy when they give you the end punctuation, but you have to remember what happens if they give you a sentence and they leave off the end punctuation and they say, okay, we want you to put the punctuation there and then we want you to tell what kind of sentence it is. So you have to be really careful about relying on that end punctuation mark because sometimes they might leave it off. And when you're writing, no one is telling you what mark you need to use. So um, this very first practice set is pretty easy because it's, you know, you just have to look at the end of punctuation. But you're not always going to have the end punctuation. All right, let's do number two together. It says, hot, melted rock, gas, and steam burst from the volcano. Okay, that's just a normal declarative telling sentence. It ends with a period, so you need to write the word declarative on the blank. Okay, now, before we get far, any farther, let me tell you what that red colored pencil is doing. Mrs. Stode is pretty sneaky sometimes, and so she always how am I going to know if they're doing the lesson with me or if they're just going straight to their workbook? This is how I'm going to know. I want you to take that red colored pencil and I want you to go down to the bottom of your page and where you see the number 8, I want you to circle it in a big red circle. So when I check your workbook, I'm going to be looking for that big red circle and I'm going to think in my head, aha, they did the lesson with me. If I don't see that big red circle, then that means you didn't do the lesson for me and you won't get the full credit on that workbook page. So, I'm very sneaky like that. I do that on grammar. I do that in spelling. I also do that in writing. So, you have to watch the videos with me in order to get full credit. All right. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go through and I want you to do 3 through 10 by yourself. You're going to do it by yourself. And then when you're completely done with that, I want you to come back and I want you to check the answers with me. I'm going to check them with you. Now, this is the honesty policy, all right? 
yes, you could continue on and get the answer straight from my lesson. But what good is that doing you? That is not doing you any good because on Friday, when Friday rolls around, nobody's going to sit there and give you the answers to the question. And so if you don't practice trying to figure out the answers for yourself and you just look at the answers, it's not going to do you any good. And so I'm going to pretty much know at, on Friday's quiz if you got everything in your workbook correct but you did kind of bad on your quiz, then maybe you went on straight to the answers and didn't try to figure out anything for yourself. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to pause the video, do 3 through 10, and then when you're done with those, I want you to come back and we're going to check the answers together. All right, now that you are back, let's go ahead and do 3 through 10. I've got to try to get my little recording device only lasts 15 minutes, and so I've got to try to get this under 15 minutes or I'm going to have to do a part two. So let's see if we can get this done in 50 in the rest of my time. Number three says, watch how hot ash and lava flow down the mountain. Okay, it ends with a period, but what is the subject? Well, there's really no subject there. It's talking to a specific person, and that person is you. So that is going to be an imperative. Number four should be pretty easy. It says, what is lava? Ends with a question mark, so it is an Interrogative. Remember, interrogation, asking a bunch of questions. Number five, lava is hot liquid rock that comes out of a volcano. Okay, that's something that you would find in your science book, right? It's just a normal, common, everyday sentence, so it's going to be declarative. Number six, wow, a lava flow looks so dangerous. Well, what's it have at the end? Exclamation point. If that exclamation point was not there, it would give you a clue by the word wow at the very beginning of that sentence. So you know that that's going to be an exclamatory sentence. Number seven, please leave the area immediately. That is a command that they are giving you. Commands are called imperative sentences. Number eight, one famous volcano is Mount Vesuvius in Italy. Is that something you could find in your science book, your history book, whatever? Yes, it is. It's just a telling sentence, and we say that telling sentences are called declarative. Number nine, will Mount Vesuvius erupt again? Well, it has given you a question mark, so it's easy, but remember, they're always not, they're not going to give you the punctuation when you're writing a sentence, so you kind of have to figure it out for yourself. So that's a question mark. It's a question sentence, so it is an interrogative. Remember, the police station and asking a bunch of questions. Interrogation room. The last one, number 10. We're almost done. It says, I hope not. And then it has an exclamation point at the end, so it is an exclamatory sentence. Okay, this is what you, how kind of your grammar lessons are going to go with me. They're going to be about 15 minutes. Um, on, law, on the video. Now, you, I do realize you have to stop and actually do the questions. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to make sure you have that number eight circled in red, but I also want you to take, want you to take your workbook to your mom and have her initial where it says practice set A at the top. I want her to initial um, that to make, to kind of say she's seen it, she knows you've done it. Let's talk a little bit about correction. It's not going to do any good for your mom if you miss five of them and you've erased the answer and filled it in with the correct thing. So whenever you make a mistake, what I want you to do is I want you to cross it out and I want you to put the correct answer beside it so that your mom can kind of see if you're having problems. Because if you miss five out of ten, then it's maybe you know a good clue that she needs to say, okay, maybe we need to go over that again because you have a quiz on Friday. So... Make sure you do that for, for me, and um, I hope you've enjoyed your first grammar lesson. Listen, do not bring your grammar workbook to school unless I specifically ask for it on your assignment sheet. Um, we won't use these in school unless I you know, choose to do that. So um, keep it at home, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow at school for our very first King's Day. Woo